Great day, dears. Today we are going to see our second video about investigation and modeling. Cambridge International Mathematics 0607 past paper 6 is what investigation and modeling. Let's start with part A investigation. This investigation is about finding numbers that have the same number system. So this is the topic today. The possible number stems are the 9 integers from 1 to 9. So number stems are going to be 1 to 9. Here is how to calculate the number stem of a number. Step 1. Add the digits of a number to get a total. If the total is 9 or less, stop. Otherwise, add the digits of the total. Repeat step 2. So to find out the number stem, we have to add the digits and we have to see the total and the total is a single digit value because if it's 9 or less means it's a single digit if it's a single digit then we have to stop it which means whatever the single digit we have got here that's what going to be the number stem because we already told that it is 1 to 9 are the stem numbers otherwise which means if your total is a two digit value or three digit value Add the digits of the total again. I mean, you have to repeat the step two. One, until you are getting that total value as a single digit, you have to repeat the process. Once you get the single digit, and that's what going to be your number step. Here they gave some examples. Let's see. Number 124. For this, we are going to find out the number stem. So when we are going to add the digits of it, 1 plus 2 plus 4, it's actually 7. And it's a single digit, so its number stem is 7. Next, we will consider the number 893 and when we are adding its digits, we are getting the total as 20. It's a two digit, so we got to repeat the process. 2 and 0, when we are adding it, we are getting the total as 2. It's a single digit, so its number stem is 2. Complete the tables to show the number stem for these multiples of 3 and 12. So multiples of 3, they have given from 3 to 30 and number stem, they are asking us to calculate. They left one space and we know how we have to calculate the number stem. It's just adding the digits. 1 plus 5, 6. So 6 is the number stem. And multiple of 12, they have given between 12 to 120 and number stem, first three values they have given. Let's find out the remaining values. 48, when we are adding 48 digits, it's 1, 4, 4 plus 8, 12, then 1 plus 2 again, 3. 66 plus 0 is 6, 7 plus 2 is 9, 8 plus 4 is 12, so 12 means 1 plus 2 3, 9 plus 6 is 15, so 1 plus 5 is 6, 1 plus 8 is 9, and 1 plus 2 is 3. And here we can find a pattern that that multiple of 3 are having the number stem as 369, 369, and it's keep on continuing, even the multiple of 12 have the same. Next. Complete the sequence to show the first four numbers greater than 3 that have a stem number of 3. So the first value which will be greater than 3 and that will have the number stem as 3, that's actually 1, 2, which means 12, 12, sum of digits is 1 and 2. If you add it, we are getting 3. So 12, after that they gave 21, then after that they gave 30, then after 30 now, then by the calculation we can get 339 we will be getting it and here we can find a pattern that every number are having the difference common differences 9 then in the subdivision 2 they are asking find the nth term of the sequence part b1 so when we are going to find out the 10th term of the sequence we just have to look at the common difference so we got in the first bits of common differences same that is 9 so that its nth term is going to be 9n plus so what number we have to add to get total of 12 from 9 it's 3 so our nth term is 9 n plus 3 okay let's proceed next find the 87th number greater than 3 that has a number stem of 3 so 87th number we have to find it and we just have found that what is the nth term is it is actually 9 n plus 3 and when you are substituting n value as 87, we will be getting that what is the number it is. 9 into 87 plus 3 is the answer. And 9 into 87 plus 3, we can put in our calculator and then we can find the value easily. It is 786. Let's start 
solving that C1, it's completing the table. So they gave the numbers and they found the number term here. And they did some calculation and they got answer here from the calculation. So let's see what is the pattern they have followed it. So when number is 3, they have divided the number by 9 and 3 divided by 9 gives the quotient as 0 and remainder as 3. And so yeah, that the same reminder they have written as number stem. Next one is 19 and 19 when they are dividing by 9 they got that quotient as 2 because 2 nines are 18 and 1 is reminder then 1 is what they have written in the number stem so here also that number stem is 1 and we can even find that by our method that adding the digits and we can check 2 plus 2 4 4 is the number stem and if it's a 22, 22 we will be dividing by 9 because that's what they have done for the previous calculations. When we are dividing 22 by 9, 2 9s are 18 plus 4 we are getting, yeah see here, here also that reminder and number stem both are same. And 35, 35 they have divided by 9 and let's see how many 9 in that uh, 35. It's actually 3 9s are 27 and remainder is 8. And if it's 8, then we'll be getting that 8 as answer and 3 plus 5 is also 8. So our calculation is correct. Then 7 is the number actually we have got here. If 7 is the number stem and what digit can come here, either it can come 7 itself or else we can go ahead with any other numbers we can go ahead. But how to do it? Suppose if you are taking number stem is 7 itself, maybe you can go ahead like 7 and here what you can do 7 divided by 9 and quotient is going to be 0 and remainder is 7. And it is for the last row alone, it is not compulsory that you have to use only 7. You can even use that any number but that should give the remainder as 7. For example, you can use here 16 and 16 now 1 plus 6 that number stem is going to be 7 and and the number is 16 actually here and when we are dividing it 1 9 are 9 and then the remainder is going to be 7 remainder and number stem both are having the same value a number that is not a multiple of 9 is divided by 9 what is the connection between its number stem and the remainder just now we have seen that number stem and remainder both are same so we can say here remainder is the number stem Reminder is the number stem. Next question is using your answer to part C2, write down the reminder when 104020100 is divided by 9. So here we have to find out the reminder, but if you are going to divide this number by 9, it's going to be a very big, very big value. But just now we found that relation. Remainder is the number stem and number stem is the remainder. So it is very easy to calculate the number stem. And if you are adding the digits 1, 4, 2 and again 1, then we are getting the answer as 8. one four two and one we are getting the answer as eight and why i didn't add the remaining digits now because they are zero and there is no, go, no use of adding the zero for the digits and eight is going to be the remainder because eight is a stem number stem number is the same as remainder we'll proceed next a second question is the sequence shows the first three numbers greater than two with the number stem of two so previously we did for three and now we are doing for uh, it's actually after 9, 10, now 1, 11, 1 plus 1, then again 20, 29, right in the next two numbers of the sequence. And it's obvious that 1, 2 numbers are the number stem numbers. Then 10 is going to be again 1. The process is going to continue in this order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are the values. Then 10 is going to be 1, then 11th is going to be 2, then 13th is going to be 3. So this is what that process is going to continue. Which means uh, 11 after the 20, so every 9 time, because here we have 9 numbers. So after that 9th position, that same number stem, we are going to get it. So 11, 20, 29, then after that we will be getting 29 plus 9, it's 38, and then 47 will be getting and we can check 3 plus 8 it's 11 11 now 1 plus 1 2 we are getting here 4 plus 7 is 11 11 now 1 plus 1 2 
find the nth term of the sequence yes even here that common difference is 9 so nth term is 9 n plus what number we have to add to get 11 it's actually 2 so here also we can uh, find a pattern that whenever we are finding the nth term where we want number term of any number the same number is coming here number term is 2 so here also 2 Let's solve part C. Using your answer to part B, find the largest number less than 10,000 has a number stem of 2. So we will use the previous nth term that is 9n plus 2 and they gave the limit as 10,000 less than 10,000. It's okay, we can even take the 10,000. And if you are doing this calculation and when you are finding that n value, we are getting 10,000 minus 2 divided by 9 and if you simplify this we are getting the answer as 11108 by 9 as the answer and here the remainder is 8 so that we are having that number stem is 8 for the number but we want actually number stem is 2 so that in the place of remainder 2 should be there which means number should be 11102 by 9 and that is the number which will be having the remainder as 2 which means number stem is also 2 so if you convert this number we are getting the answer as 9992 divided by 9 so that number is 9992 next the integer k is a number stem okay so k it's the general constant they are giving here write down in terms of k the first four numbers greater than k with the number stem of k so after k when we will be having that again the number stem is k na after the ninth value that is nothing but k plus 9 then again when you are going to add 9 with it it will be k plus 9 plus 9 it's k plus 18 then k plus 27 and k plus 36 then write down in terms of n and k the nth term for the sequence nine numbers greater than k so yeah they are asking that what is the nth term we know that common difference is 9 and 9 n plus whatever the number we want that's what will be here as a constant so it's going to be 9 n plus k if you have a doubt you can even simplify this and you can get it the common difference is 9 here and from 9 to k plus 9 how will you get it by adding k so 9 n plus k is the nth term the next we have to find complete this table 4a it's 7 divided by 12 so they are trying with the 12 here when they are dividing 7 by 12 0 and 7 are the reminders and 15 divided by 12 1 is the quotient and reminder is going to be 3 then 23 divided by 12 it's 1 and then it's going to be 11 an integer that is not a multiple of 12 has remainder f so these are the remainder f when it is divided by 12 find in terms of n and f the nth term for the sequence of number greater than f with the remainder of f so here we can take that what is the number what is the nth term of the sequence that we can find it or else we know that since we are multiplying that we are finding that we are dividing by 12 it's going to be 12 n plus what number we are getting that remainder is what going to be that the constant so it's going to be 12 n plus f simply we can write it because we are dividing by 12 it is so that 12 n and what is the remainder we are getting that's what going to be here so it's 12 n plus f is the answer here next show that f plus 10 cannot be a term of the sequence of a numbers greater than f with the remainder of f so the same sequence they are continuing and we have to prove f plus 10 is not an element of this sequence so what we have to do the given nth term we can equate with the given value so f plus 10 and f and f will get cancelled so that 12 n equals to 10 we are getting and if you solve that n value we are getting 10 by 12 actually it's a fractional but n we know that it's a position number so n is a position number and we know that position number should be a natural number position number should be a natural number always so that we have to make sure that if any n value is natural number then it's a right value but in this problem it is actually 10 by 12 it's a fraction so that n is not a natural number so what can we do 
we can clearly say that f plus 10 is not a part of the sequence. Let's proceed further. We are here, our investigation is over. Let's go ahead with our modeling. It's about elevators. So, topic is elevators. This task is about the mass an elevator carries and the time it takes to move the between the flows. So, how much mass it is going to carry and what is the time taken between moving the flows. So, ECF is a company that makes a elevators so it's a company name for each type of elevator the company uses two mathematical models so two models they are trying and they are checking it model one the company models the masses of the passengers using the elevator so since that mass and then time taken are the elements model one they are concentrating on the masses of the passengers and model two they are checking that the time taken between the flows so the ECF5 elevator carries a maximum of 5 passengers. So ECF5, so there they are referring that how many passengers it can carry. For model 1, the company estimates that so 2 by 10 of the passengers have a mass of 50 kg. 4 by 10 of the passengers have a mass of 70 kg. 4 by 10 of the passengers have a mass of 85 kg. So here they have defined only how many passengers can carry but they did not define the mass. But we know that model 1 is all about the mass. So out of 10 persons, 2 persons are having the mass of 50, remaining 4 are having 70 and the rest of the 4 are having that mass of 85. So this is what the calculation and they are checking it out. Let's see whether this is working or what. And in the total 10 persons, 0 to 9 they have taken, they have uh, numbered them as 0 to 9, 0 and 9 because they said that 2 of them are having 50, so 0 and 1 are having the mass 50. 2, 3, 4, 5 are having the 70 because the 4 and last 6, 7, 8, 9 are having the masses 85 kg. So we have to answer from here. Numbers are chosen at random from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We know that that's numbers and each one are referring some masses. 0 and 1 and it is 50, 2, 3, 4, 5 now it is uh, 70 and these all are referring that 85 the passengers of the five passengers are a b c d and e they have mentioned it here is a random number table arranged in group of five numbers so 1 6 8 8 5 2 4 7 9 double 1 so these all are referring that uh, persons a uh, passengers and we know that each are referring a particular mass that I have mentioned it here they gave in different colors, one and gray and one and white. Uh, use the last four rows. Last four rows are white of the random number table to complete the table of trials below. The first six trials have been completed for you. So what they have done is, yeah, so the numbers, the respective uh, masses has been filled here. For every number, we have that respective values. Like if it's one and a, we know that that's a 50 kg. So it's 50. Next one is 6, so it's going to be 6 and it's 85 kg. So that's what they have filled it and they found the total mass in the last column. When we are filling the uh, respective masses, so these are the values we are getting here and in the last column I have added that masses so that we are getting the total masses. Let's go to the next one. It is the ECF 5 elevator carries a maximum total mass of 400 kg. Use the results of trial 1 to 10 so that the previous trials we have to use and work with the relative frequency that the total mass will be more than 400 kg. So, allowed mass is 400 kg. So, here we have to check where we have that more than 400 kg is. Here we have one 410, then yeah, here we have one more 410, then rest are fine. So, 2 out of 10 values all are actually. Uh, more than that 400 kg so we can write this as 2 by 10 uh, because it's a relative frequency means it's a probability but I should give the value it, it's decimal because it's a relative frequency next B is for model 2 the diagram below is a distance time graph for the ECF 5 elevator the graph modeling the moment as y equal to f of t is the equation given 
where f of t is the number of flows above or below the ground floor at t time seconds. So they gave the graph. The work graph shows the elevator starting one flow below the ground floor. At which floor does it stop? So actually one floor below the ground floor it's starting and which floor it's stopping they are asking it's actually third floor. Then next between uh, which two flows does the elevator have the greatest average speed? We know that average speed is nothing but a distance by time and distance is here flows and time now we know that time taken between the flows. Whenever the denominator is lesser, if this denominator is less, then average speed is going to be greatest because they are asking greatest average speed. So we have to make sure that the time taken is lesser. So that's what we are going to do here. Between minus 1 and 0, it has taken almost uh, greater than 6. And between 0 and 1, it have taken 1, 2, 3, 4. Actually, it's... Uh, lesser than 4 it have taken then between the floor 1 and 2 it have taken actually 4 exact 4 then between the floor 2 and 3 it is taken 4 2 so exactly they have taken 6 when we are looking at here is what the time taken is very less less than 4 so that is in between the floor 0 and 1 so in between 0 and 1 the time taken is very less Find the average time it takes the elevator to move from one floor to the next. So what is the average time taken between one floor to that another? Total time taken is 20 and it have moved four floors. So total time taken by the number of floors have given that average time taken that is actually five seconds. Let's go to the next one. The EC up 3 elevator carries a maximum of 3 passengers. The maximum total mass is 240 kg and they are using a different proportions here as in the table that number is 0 to 7. Previously they have used 0 to 9 and now they are using only 0 to 7. And in that one particular group 1 to 5 is mass of 70 kg so that 0 and 6 and 7 are having the another group. Yeah, here uh, the proportion of passengers for 5 by 8, that amount of numbers is 5. That is the group of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we know what will come here because 0 have gone there, and 6 and 7 will be in the third group. The amount of number is 2. Then here that amount of number is 1, and we can check what is the proportion of passengers. The total number of passengers come in the denominator, and amount have come in the numerator. So 5 and 2 have taken place, so that here it is going to be 1 by 8. Next, random numbers model the masses of 3 passengers A, B, C. Here is a random number table arranged in group of 4 numbers. 3 random numbers are needed for each trial. The number 8 and 9 are not used cross out the numbers 8 and 9 in the table. So uh, we are using the numbers only 0 to 7 but in the table that values between 0 to 9 have been given but they are omitting the values 8 and 9 and when 4 numbers remain in a row. For example if you see the second one 1, 6, 3, 3 here 4 values are there but no 8 and 9 are there and in the uh, lift it is only 3 passengers are allowed. So that we have to cross out the last number. We have to cross out the last number so that's what we are going to do for this one use the last of four rows of the random table to complete the table trials below so we are going to fill the respective values after striking out this answers so let me strike out the values first uh, i have to cross out eight here and here no eight so that last number has to be striked out and here i have eight so and then the last row then 9 I have to strike out. Then these are the values that are representing some masses. We know that what are the masses they are representing and let's fill that respective masses. Yes, so these are the respective masses that I have to fill it and I did. Here if you are checking everything is actually lesser than the maximum mass because the maximum mass allowed is 240 kg and here if you see here, 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 here in all the places the weight is the mass is lesser than the given value so it's actually good 
Next is for model 2, the diagram below is a distance time graph for the ECF3 elevator. The graph modeling the moment is y equal to h of t, where h of t is the number of flows above or below the ground floor at t time seconds. Um, so it have moved between two flows and it have taken the 20 seconds time. Uh, the graph shows that ECF elevator starts from to move from flow 1. Find the average time. So what is average time? Totally it have taken 20 seconds and it have moved between two flows. So 20 out of 2. It's 20 by 2. So that we are getting that answer as 10 seconds is the average time taken. It's a bit high. Next. H of t equal to cos kt. So previously they have defined that what type of graph it is. It's H of t and they have given what H of t is. It's actually cos kt. Find the value of the integer k. So k value they are asking to find it. So that let's go ahead with one of the coordinate or one of the point from the graph. Let's take this coordinate it is x value is 10 and y value is 0. So 10 comma 0 can be substituted. So we will be getting 0 equals cos k will remain same and p value is 10. So cos k10 we are getting. To find out the k we have to move all the known values to that side. So cos will go that side it will become cos inverse cos inverse of 0 equals 10 k and cos inverse of 0 we know that that's actually 90 degree and 90 degree equals 10 k uh, where we can get the value of k as 90 divided by 10 it is 9 k value we are getting as 9 next the mass carried by an elevator is x kilograms okay so here they are generalizing here if it is if it can carry x kilograms ec up say that an elevator is well designed when the probability that x is less than the maximum total mass is greater than 0.95 so x less than the maximum mass is 0.95 it should be r above that and it takes at most five seconds on average to move between flows explain whether the ec up five elevator is well designed okay so let's check that first condition that is the probability of less than maximum rate so probability of x less than the maximum is actually 0 0.8 for this problem if you have a look at the previous one we have calculated that p of x greater than maximum is we got it as 0 0.2 which means p of x less than maximum is that the remaining are 1 minus this answer so that's what we are getting as 0 0.8 but as per the condition it should be greater than 0 0.95 so that we can say it is not well designed then we can go to the next one ec up 3 elevators well designed or not so just now we have checked that EC up 3 in terms of mass all the mass are good so probability of x less than maximum is actually we got 1 every one everything is succeeded 8 by 8 so it's 1 but if you are taking average time taken here it's 10 seconds but whereas the condition is 5 seconds so what we have to say average time taken is average time taken is 10 seconds so this is also failure we have to say it is also not well designed so yeah you can check it is 060762 version and a major series 17 so 2017 version i am working out now Let's proceed further. Write on two ways to improve model 1 and question 1a. So if we have to improve the model question 1 1a, then what we have to do? Actually, they have to improve is the model. They should go with more trials, increase the trials. And after that, they have checked only that limited masses, but they have not checked that more masses. So we can suggest them that we, they can increase the masses too. So these are the two improvements we can give them to model 1 to improve in the question 1a. Because they have checked only 10 percentages they have taken and they have 
checked it so they can go ahead with more trials and then masses also that limited so instead of that they can go ahead with more masses and they can check because they have checked only 50 70 and 85 next EC of n elevator carries some maximum n passengers. Uh, the maximum total mass is an 80 n kilograms for model 1. The company uses a different proportion of passengers for ma each mass as shown in the table. A number is chosen at random from m integers to give the mass. Okay, so previously we have seen the same table. There actually we have realized that amount of number is nothing but the numerator. So this is going to be 2 and this is going to be m minus 3. Then 50, 70, 85, uh, since here, uh, what value we can give here? It's going to be actually 50 kg. Now we know that only for the zero, we are allocating that 50 kg as per the recent update. So that amount is actually one, the value is zero, but totally how many numbers are there? It's one. And we know if uh, amount of number is one, we know that what is the proportion is going to be? It is one divided by M. Yeah. Explain why m greater than or equal to 4. We know that that proportion is a natural number. So m minus 3 now, whatever the numbers we are using for the ratio or proportion, it should be a natural number. We can say that m minus 3 is belongs to natural number. Uh, if it belongs to natural number, we can write an equation m minus 3 should be greater than 0. Then only it can be a natural number m minus 3 should be greater than 0 then we can say m is greater than 3 m greater than 3 can be said in other words that is m greater than or equal to 4 then that's what we have to prove that's for model 2 the distance time graph for the ecf 7 elevator is modeled by y equal to minus h of 2t so previously we have seen that what is h of t is h of t is nothing but cos kt we have got and cos kt also we have replaced that by 9 so that now i can write instead of cos kt i can write this as cos 9t now use your answer to question 2b2 write on the question in this distance time graph so you can look at the question 2b2 that's what we have got actually h of t equals it's cos 90 we got it finally and here the function we have to write it y equals minus so minus will come h of 2t h of t is cos 90 in the sense h of 2t is 2 times of 90 it's going to be cos 18t the next on the grid below sketch the graph of y equals minus h of 2t so we can put this equation in our gdc and we will be getting this graph then the mass carried by an elevator is x kilograms so it's carrying some x kilograms the probability that x less than the maximum is 0 0.99 okay so use this information and your graph in part B so this graph we have to use to explain why the ECF 7 elevator is well designed so the probability of X uh, less than maximum they mentioned it is 0 0.99 and actually this is greater than or equal to 0 0.95 test it is passed then that average time taken we can get because that's what that second one average time taken is so here 10 seconds total time taken between two flows so it's 10 by 2 we are getting 5 seconds and this is also satisfied so we can write here it's satisfied both the conditions so we can say ec up 7 is well designed so when 3 and 5 failed now 7 have succeeded we know that 7 is always succeeding yeah so the question is over we will meet in the next video and next past paper until then bye yes thank you